Okay, guys. So today lesson, uh, it's uh, from section 3.2. Okay. And section 3.2, it's about um, graphs. It's about graphs of functions. So only two objectives in this section, and you guys have a PowerPoint available for you. It shows you also the pages um, in the textbook, in your ebook, so you can also read it. So uh, objective number one, it's identifying the graph of function. And objective number two, it's going to be about obtaining information uh, about graph of function. So we're going to read the information from the graphs, okay? Um, so here, I'm going to skip that. Okay, identify the graph of functions. Okay, so first of all, how you're going to know, we talk in section 3.1, how you can decide if the equation is a function. Um, so we did the problem like that when we have the equ equation and we have to decide if that equation represents the function. So what we did, we solved that equation for y and um, if you only have one solution for y, that means that's going to be a function. If you end up with two solutions for y, that means we're not having function. Now, how we can do the same thing by using the graph. So to decide from the graph, if the graph represents the function, what we're going to do, we're going to use the vertical line test. And most of you probably heard about vertical line test. So vertical line test, what you're doing with vertical line test? Um, you're going to have a graph. Hold on, where I can, um, okay. Just give me a second. Okay, so you're going to have a graph. Okay, and let's say we talk recently about circles. So this is your graph. Now, how are you going to know if this graph represents the function? So we're going to perform vertical line test. So vertical line test, this is what you do. You draw a vertical line, okay? And a vertical line touch your graph at more than one point, that means we don't have a fun function. So this graph, it's not a function because my vertical line test touched the graph twice. So in order to have a function, vertical line should touch your graph once only. So vertical line test. So note here, we have function only if vertical line and you create that vertical line touch or intersect the graph once okay so in this case my vertical line intersect circle twice so this circle is not a function so again you have a definition a set of point in the xy plane is the graph of function if and only if every vertical line intersect graph in at most one point so in this case my vertical line intersect graph twice so we don't have a function okay and here we're going to talk about a couple of examples. So we need to decide which of the graphs uh, represents the function. And they also give you the equation. So they're showing you right here that you, uh, in problem A, that they draw the vertical line and you can draw a couple of vertical lines. And in this case, my vertical line touched the graph once. So, so far we have a function. Also, if you will draw the vertical line right here, it's the same scenario. The vertical line intersect graph once only, so this graph definitely represents function. So you can graph vertical line 
anywhere you want it, just to do the test. In part B, we're checking if the function y is equal x to the third power, um, I'm sorry, if the graph y equal x to the third power uh, represents the function. So we draw in the vertical line right here. And in this case, vertical line touch slash intersect graph once only. So yes, this is function because we passed that vertical line test. Now in part C, uh, we're also going to do the vertical line test. So we draw the vertical line right here and look what happened. This vertical line intersect our blue graph twice. So we did not pass vertical line test. So this is not a function. Not a function, vertical line intersect graph twice. And also you guys can see that this is not a function because I teach you also the shortcut in section 3.1 for functions x coordinates can't repeat. So here, even just by checking on the coordinates, uh, when x is equal one, we have two different outputs. Um, so that's not the function because definition of the function, each input should have one output. So input one has two different outputs. And circle, we talk about circles. Circles are not fu a function because we don't pass vertical line test. So this is the vertical line and vertical line intersects circle twice. So it's not a function. So vertical line test, all the time when you see graph, just perform vertical line test. If vertical line intersect graph once, like in um, example A and B, we have function. If vertical line intersect graph more than once, it's not a function. So very nice test to check if graph represents the function. Next, what we're going to talk about it. So this is objective two. We're going to gather information um, uh, about the graph of a function. So we're going to read information from the graph. Okay. So I will go over this example, which you guys have it um, also on PowerPoint. So let me just read it first and I'm going to show work on the whiteboard. So here, we have let f be a function, uh, which graph is in figure 15. So this is the graph, okay? And I will talk about that graph in a second. Um, the graph of f may represent the distance y that the bab of pendulum is from its at rest position at time x. Negative value of y means that pendulum is to the left of uh, the address position and positive value of y means that pendulum is to the right at, of the address position. So now they want you to read the information from the graph. So part A, you have to find, you have to evaluate what is f of zero. So I'm going to keep this graph and we're going to answer those questions. So in part A, they ask you, hmm. so we're going to solve part A. When they ask you to find f of zero, f of three pi over two, and f of three pi. Okay, so going back to our graph, f of zero. So what we did in section uh, 
f of zero, we replace in the equation of the function x coordinate with zero and we find the y value. So f of zero, how do you read that from the graph? So you have to find zero. Zero represents your x coordinate. So this is zero. And find the y coordinate uh, when f is equal to zero. So here you have that point right here, which is the y-intercept, 0, 4. So f of 0, it's the y-coordinate of that point, which will be 4. Okay, so f of 0 f of zero means you're looking for the point which has x-coordinate equals 0, which is right here. However, the solution is the y-coordinate, which will be 4. Okay, so that's f of 0. Uh, then they ask you to find f of 3 pi over 2. So again, your solution is the y-coordinate. So what you're going to do on the graph, find the point, again, which has x coordinate equal 3 pi over 2. So x coordinate equal 3 pi over 2 right here. Okay. However, f of 3 pi over 2 represents the y coordinate. So your answer is this, 0. So again, don't forget that you're looking for y coordinates. Okay. And then you have f of 3 pi. So you're looking for the point which has x coordinate equal 3 pi, x coordinate equal 3 pi right here. So that's the point. And your solution has to be the y value. So find the y coordinate when of the point which x coordinates equal 3 pi. So the solution will be negative 4. Okay, so I will just write note. So what we're doing here, find the point on the graph with x coordinate equal zero and f of zero represents the y coordinate of that point so hopefully that makes sense so let me go back to the powerpoint so again f of zero Find the point on the graph where x coordinates equal zero. And to evaluate the function f of zero, you're looking for the y coordinate, which was four. f of three pi over two. So your x is equal three pi over two. So your solution will be the y coordinate of that point, which is zero. And f of three pi, so three pi represents x coordinate of the point. So I have a point right here, x coordinates three pi. However, when you evaluate the function, you always find in the y value. That's why the solution is negative 4. Okay. So we're reading, we're moving on. Okay. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this problem. Average cost function. The average cost function, c hat, again, that hat has no meaning, it's just notation per computer of manufacturing X computers per day is given by the function. So again, X represents how many computers they manufacturing per day, okay? And C represents cost. Okay, C cost. X amount of manufacturing of computers. Am 
manufacturing per day. Okay. So we have the equation, which is nice. And now what we need to do, you need to find the average cost um, of manufacturing. And you have A, B, C. Now, a couple things. D and E, we're skipping in this class because in D and E, they're using graphing calculator and we're not supposed to use graphing calculators for college algebra. So I'm not going over D and E and also I'm not going to ask um, questions like D and E on a test. So find the average cost and then part A, and I will just do part A because the rest of them are doing the same thing. Uh, when t we manufacturing 30 computers in a day. So what that means, that means that X is equal to 30. And to find that average cost, you're going to replace X from the equation with 30. And we'll end up with 0.56. Replace X with 30, so that will be 30 squared minus 34.39 times 30 plus 12, 12.57, plus 20,000 divided by 30. So this is just plugging in into your calculator and we will end up with, right here, this is the solution, 1,351.54. So the average cost, um, if we manufacturing 30 computers per day, it's 1,351 and 54 cents. And for part B and C, you're going to do exactly the same work. You're just going to replace X with 40 for part B and for part C, X with 50. So we're just going to move on. Also here, you have a solution. Um, I would just at least do one part. Just make sure that when you guys plug in on your calculator, you're getting the correct answer. Just double check. Again, I mentioned that D, uh, D and E was skipping because it required a graphing calculator, which they actually showing the solution. Um, but again, we're not teaching this class with graphing calculators, so I'm going to move on. But you can definitely read those information if you're using TI-84 um, and use it uh, in a class. So that's it. Technically, this is the end of section 3.2. Um, very little information. Oh, I'm sorry. I move. It's not the end. Sorry, guys. Because in this problem right here, I only answer question A. Okay. I didn't answer B, C, D, and all the rest of it. So I apologize, let me go back to this example when they give you the, the graph and we need to, and we need to answer all the questions from the graph. I was thinking, okay, wait, this is something it's missing. Okay. So we're going back to this problem. Okay, and we're going to solve B. Okay, so in B, they ask you for the domain. Okay, domain of the function. So domain of the function, just let's review. That domain is the set of all inputs which means all X values for which function makes sense. Okay, so to find the domain here, I'm going back to the graph. So to find the domain, Okay, so the main represents the X values. So I'm going to check. Okay, so the blue, it's the graph. So for which X values this function exists? So my graph starts from point zero comma four. So the first X value is zero. 
and my graph stops right here. So my last, my last x value for which this function exists, it's for pi. So the domain will be the interval. So you're always checking the domain using the x values. So the domain will be the interval from zero, because when x is equal to zero, right here, this is our first uh, point on the graph, up to up to four pi, because this is our last point on the graph. So this is the domain. Okay. Right. So, to four pi. So the domain is based on the x coordinates, based on the x values. So the domain is the interval from zero to four pi. And I keep that in the bracket because we including x equals zero. So that's the first one because we have closer including four pi. So that's the domain. So that was the answer. Zero to four pi. Or um, so right here, the answer is 0 to 4 pi. For part C, they're asking you what's range. So let's just review that range represents the set of all outputs. So range always match with outputs, which is y values so you have to give me the interval um, uh, for which this function exists based on the y values so when you're looking for range okay when you're looking for range you see you describe range using the y values so to find the range, find the lowest point on the graph. Okay, so right here, this is the lowest, right? And find the highest point on the graph. So when we're talking about range, it's always based on the y values, which height of the graph is the y value. So the highest point, it's four. So when you describe the range, so the graph exists from negative four to positive. So like you see, this is your blue graph, and the range is the set of all y values. So every single point on the graph, okay, right here, we write the range graph, give me all the y values for which uh, this function exists. So the lowest point, so I always the lowest point, which is negative 4. Which is four. So the range are the y values of the interval from negative four to four brackets. Okay, so that's range. Range that's your y values, domain that's your x values. Okay. So that was part C. Part D, we have to list the intercepts. So let me just clear that graph. Okay. So this is um, D, list the intercepts. So we're reading them from the graph. So I'm going to look first for x intercepts. So intercepts, that's the point on the graph uh, which is laying down on the x-axis or y-axis. So when we talk about x intercept, this is x intercept. The graph intercept x axis right here, and to see to find the x intercepts when you guys use the algebra, you replace y equals zero. So for x intercepts, you're looking for the points which have y coordinates equals zero. 
X intercept, the graph intercept X intercepts. X intercepts. We have four, four points where the graph intersects X axis. So we're going to do it again. X intercepts. Okay. So X intercept, we have. I'm not going to list them. I will just guys show you right here. This is X intercept. This point is also X intercept. Five pi over two comma zero is X intercept. And seven pi over two comma zero is X intercept. Now what we need to do uh, we need to find the y-intercepts. So y-intercepts find the points on the graph. Uh, so that's the point on the y-axis. So for y-intercept, this is y-axis. I only have one y-intercept because this graph touch or intersect y-axis right here. So the y-intercept is now comma four. So that's y intercept point on the y axis, x intercepts in red points on the x axis. So very nice to find the graph because we don't need to do any algebra. So that was uh, part D of that problem when we need to find the intercepts. Okay, so I'm going to clear that and we'll talk about next. Hope you guys don't mind that I'm using this graph to teach you and explain that when you use the graph in front of you. Okay. Now I'm answering the next part of this problem is uh, we are right here. Uh, how many times does the line y equal to intersect the graph? So don't forget, just a note here, y equal to is the horizontal line. So how many times the horizontal line intersect the graph, the blue graph? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the horizontal line um, y equal to y equal to, so it's a horizontal line. Okay, so you don't have the horizontal line, so you can imagine that horizontal line, or you can always graph it. It's asking how many times y equal to intersect our graph. Okay. One, two, three, four. The answer will be four times. So the horizontal line y equal to intersect our graph one, two, three, four at four points, which means four times. So the answer is four. Here the answer is four. Four times. Now we're going to answer f of x, f of x equal negative 4. For what values of x, f of x is equal negative 4. So let me talk about this problem here. Okay. f of x, don't forget that f of x equal negative 4 means y coordinate equal negative 4. So f of x has the same meaning as the y coordinate of the point. So they're asking you in part f, find the point on the graph which has So they 
ask you to, in part F, find the point on the graph which has y coordinate equal negative 4. So again, E, we are answering E. So find x coordinates. of points with my value equal negative four. Okay. So problem again, problem F. F of X is equal to negative four. So don't forget that this is the Y coordinate. So for what values, which means find x coordinates of which y is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to the graph. Okay. So f of x, again, we are part of f of x equal to negative so let me look for the y coordinate is negative 4, right here and right here. So the coordinates for which the y coordinates are equal to negative 4. So the answer here will be for part f, x equal pi and x equal 3 pi. So when x is equal pi, f of pi is equal to negative 4, which is the y coordinate. Again, so don't forget that, that negative 4 means the same as f of pi, okay, which is the y coordinate. And f of, and here the same thing, y coordinate equal negative 4 means that you, if you evaluate the function when x is equal to 3 pi. Okay, so we look in your solution for this point. Here it's pi and 3 pi. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. In breath, for of x, f of x is equal to negative 4. We just have to get used to that, that f of x, that negative 4 is just y coordinate. And the last one, part G, they asking you here, we're talking about G, for x, f of x, we're going to translate that right here. So they asking you for what values? of x f of x it's greater than zero that f of x excuse me um that f of x greater than zero means y values are greater than zero so to translate that y values are greater than zero so for what values of x y values are greater than zero so this is what happened here. Okay, when you guys have a graph, okay, right here we have y equals zero, right? So we're talking about the y values being greater than zero, which is positive. So we're talking about this part of the graph only here, here, here. Because every single point right here in this segment on the graph has y of zero. Every single point right here has y coordinates greater than zero. Every single point right here has the y coordinates greater than zero. So we don't worry about, at this moment, the bottom part, the part of this graph which is below y equals zero. So we're talking about all the points above y equals zero. So going back to inequalities, we're talking about f of x 
greater than zero. So you guys are going to have only strength and equality. We're not including this one. We're not including this. We're not including this, and we're not including this. So they ask me for what values of x graph it's positive. The y values are positive. So your solution, you have to give me in terms of x. So this is the tricky part a little bit. So the red part of the graph is from 0 to pi over 2. And like you see, for any point on the x axis from 0 to pi over 2, like you see, y's are positive. When x is equal, let's say, pi over 4, y is right here. So you need to give the solution using intervals based on the x-axis. So we have the solution will be from 0 to pi over 2. Open parenthesis because we have that strict inequality right here. Now, next, uh, the second part of the graph. It's positive, has positive y values for all the x's right here. So every single x in that interval from 3 pi to 5 pi over 2 will give you positive y value. So see the x right here in, in that interval, this is your y value. When your x is here, the y coordinate is 4. When your x is here, the y coordinate will be here, which is above um, y equals 0, which is positive. So union 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. And I'm not in 5 pi over 2 because. When x is equal to 3 pi over 2, y is equal to 0. We want to have the y values which are positive, greater than 0. And the next part, we're talking about the last part of the red graph. So here, I'm right here, guys. So you have to describe this graph right here, which is above y equals 0, uh, based on the x values. So this graph. Okay, exist works for all the x's from here up to here. So you have to give me that interval. So that will be union 7 pi over 2 up to and the last x coordinate. is mm, again the graph shift a little bit so your last coordinate right here is four pi so up to four pi 